So, I'm not going to edit this at all. I'm just going to speak candidly to the camera. Hopefully, that's okay with you guys. Um, but, we lost a manga legend a while ago. He actually passed away on my father's birthday, which is the 1st of March. And his name was Akira Toriyama. And I believe that he is a Mount Rushmore level mangaka. If you don't know what that means, in a lot of sports, when we say Mount Rushmore, we, we like the actual mountain that has the presidents on it. Like I think the first four or something like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a historian. I admit that. I don't know my history at all. I'm very bad at history. However, I would put him on that in terms of his influence and the things that he excels at so well and how it trickled down and permeated into the manga and or anime industry over the years. Dragon Ball is credited for being one of the things that got most people into anime. It wasn't my first one, but it did have a complete, a really big and profound effect on me. And I'll never pretend that wasn't the case. I do want to see a couple of things first, right? First of all, I've actually lost a lot of people in my life from family to friends and acquaintances. I think as a result of this and this happening at an early age, like me losing my grandfather when I was like in single age, single digit ages, I handled death really well. And we're, as, as weird as it may sound, even if I have a respect and reverence for the work that you do, I can't really feel super sad about somebody I didn't know. I don't know what Kira Toriyama personally. I've never met him. I don't know any of his colleagues. But rest in power to a legend. I hope that his friends, his family, colleagues, and people who really cared about him in Dragon Ball are able to move on and move forward with this. But, um... If I'm speaking very honestly, it didn't really affect me, except for this, um, the standpoint of, hey, somebody lost their life, you know, rest in peace, my condolences to the family and everything. Same way with like Miria, because I'm not really a berserk stand that way, but we lost a manga legend. So, you know, rest in peace to the both of them. The only person I never knew that passed away that actually made me extremely sad, and I really still think it was weird to this day, was Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace to, to, to Kobe, Gigi, and the other nine passengers that passed away in that um in that plane crash, that horrific tragedy. But um, I wanted to talk about, you know, Kira Toriyama a little bit in Dragon Ball. Also Dragon Quest. I know somebody else just recently passed away that was like a, a really big deal when it comes to Dragon Quest design. I'm going to have the name here because I cannot remember off the top of my head because I'm not a Dragon Quest player. I don't really play turn-based RPGs, but I know how popular Dragon Quest is in Japan to the point that people skip school. So they don't even bother. Dragon Quest is coming out on the school day. They just no school that day. I don't know if that's true. I've heard it. I've heard and I've read that. I don't know if it's actually true. I've never actually checked that and verified it for myself, but that's pretty cool if, that, if that's actually the case. So Dragon Ball, man. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball does sometimes get a little bit more credit than it deserves, where a lot of tropes that people love or credit to Dragon Ball didn't start there. It actually started with Kaneku Man. And if you look at a lot of mangaka, they always credit that creative team. Because even me, when I went back and I really read it, I'm like, okay, the kind of arc antagonist or arc villain becoming the enemy, that was the enemy becoming the friend, think Piccolo and Vegeta and Character Tien and characters of that nature started there. I'm thinking like something with a Madaka box when the genre just changes because Kaneku Man kind of starts out as a bit of a gag manga and then becomes more serious amongst a lot of other things, reviving, revivals, power of friendship, things of that nature. A lot of that you can honestly credit to starting there at um sorry, there at um Kaneku Man. But do not ever try to downplay the influence that Dragon Ball did have on this industry, the anime manga industry, and especially in terms of getting a lot of North Americans into the genre. And a lot of people who do not like anime do like Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is one of those few series that I say it breaks what I call like the anime and or manga threshold. I would throw Death Note in there, and as much as I don't like Attack on Titan, credit where credit is due. What do I mean by that? It breaks through the anime fandom to the and then regular people who don't really engage with anime, who don't really engage with manga, they still like it. I can show my father something like this or people I don't who don't like anime something like this and they'll rock with it. Because some people can't take the zaniness, the goofiness and the super over the top stuff 
that comes from anime. So it felt a little bit more serious. Not to say Dragon Ball's not goofy, but at least the hands used to move a lot of people. I definitely know that that's not the first series to have like a transformation but i'm giving it the credit for popularizing power-ups especially with your hair color changing and you getting an aura because sometimes you may have not been the first but you're the one that did it so well so great that it just impacted everyone not everyone's doing it think your gear seconds i want you to think transformations that naruto has that you know um final getsuga i want you to think some of the things that happened in like toriko right super milk time with bills above you gotta you gotta you gotta give cork um koriyama toriyama his flowers for that he really made that like popular um for anybody who's a a, 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 a basketball fan dirk patented the like one-legged fadeaway and he hit it at a high clip and he's made that move popular that's his move but if you don't know this will chamberlain shot that shot a lot when he was playing in like the 60s but he never popularized it and i think that happens a lot like the east bay dunk i think jr Ryder gets credit for it, but he wasn't the first person to do that in the dunk contest so sometimes it's just the right person with the right aura, with the right series at the right time that has the right impact on an industry to carry that thing forward and toriyama is the one that did do that 100 percent, he did um also to show you guys this real quick cool little it's actually it's actually it's actually a grinder <laughs> but um i definitely copy i actually have this really cool um dragon ball do right that monkel got for me but um yeah i still think to this day when it comes to battle shonen there's nobody who does it like Toriyama. His ability to craft an action sequence where your eyes seem... You know what's crazy too? No, no, let, me finish, let me finish the point. Okay, I'm, I'm going to forget it. Seamlessly follow the action because there's the aura flare up, the take off, the movement lines. And I know Vegeta punched, Goku ducked, then countered, and then Vegeta put his knee up to block it. Like the sequence of events within the panels and the page is very clear it's so good to follow and what i was going to say is for a long time I, I never really cared about the dragon ball manga that way because i'm thinking to myself brother i could watch it animated but i actually think the manga fights are better than the anime as i am presently not necessarily every single one i think probably goku and cell i prefer an, an anime form but no, I actually prefer the manga more when I'm watching the acting sequences. It's to the point that I give like certain mangaka credit when I can tell that they're like taking a page out of Toriyama's book. I want you to think Rob Lucci versus Lu Luffy, Monkey D. Luffy, in any lobby. Kami Sodi, right? Um, wait, no, not, not, am, I, am I saying that right? The, it was Sodu, but like. He did like semi Kika and Kaijo and he like got skinny and you could see like he's zigzagging around. But I'm like, Rob Lucci came here. He tried to hit him with a Shigan. Luffy let the finger slide in between there and caught it because Luffy is um, weak to piercing attacks and slicing attacks. So he was trying to block Rob Lucci's punch in a way to not get stabbed. Even when Rob Lucci would try to stab him, he'd punch it like this. So the claw is not cutting Luffy. And that to me is one of his best sequences of events where I'm like, I could see who did what first and he did a great job. And a lot of other mangaka have done similar things. And, you know, Toei Animation did do the damn thing. They have so many iconic sound effects and moments and, you know, soundtracks that go with Dragon Ball that make it even bigger than it is. I... You know, I've talked about Dragon Ball on my streams and channels, and I have a Dragon Ball revisionist history and things of that nature. I don't love Super. I don't love GT. I kind of just like the original Dragon Ball. I actually was one of the people who started with Kid Goku's adventures. I never started Dragon Ball in the Saiyan Saga. I actually started when Goku was a child meeting Bulma. I actually I, rem I have vivid memories of me waiting for my dad to come home, and we would watch Dragon Ball together. An interesting thing I could say about my parents, maybe not my father. I don't know. I haven't really tested them. My mom knows Dragon Ball. You, if you talk to my mom about Dragon Ball, because you know you know how it was back in the day. We'd, I, we'd watch it all the time, every day, whatever time it came on. And we would love to be there watching the series. But my mom was always kind of in the kitchen or around. So she would see me see me watching it. And obviously what happened a lot was you'd watch up to a certain point. 
and it wouldn't be animated or, or tra- sorry, translated yet. And then they'd go back to either the first episode or a certain point, and I don't care. I'm still rewatching it all the way back up there. So with that repetition, she actually knows it. She's, she's, she's not a Vegeta fan. <laughs> you know, my favorite characters are Bulma, Vegeta, and Trunks. Those are my three favorite characters, all in the same family. Probably after that, it's like a Frieza or a Piccolo or something like that. I don't know, but I don't. I can't say that I loved how Dragon Ball was continuing. I think like Beerus and Whis are cool characters. There's things that I've liked in Super and some of the movies, but they don't really move me like that. So when it kind of happened to me, like I'm thinking to myself, like his biggest piece of work, which is Dragon Ball. It's not like um, what's that one he has, which, which is kind of crazy. He actually got some flack for because of what happened. I remember it's called like some red redheaded girl, but there was the one with um, Arale Ar- Arale, right? I don't, Dr. Slump. There we fucking go. Um, that didn't that didn't take off from what I understand the same way Dragon Ball did, but I'm pretty sure it could have been pretty popular. I'm not I'm not um I don't I don't recall, but there is one memory I definitely want to share with you guys, and I, I won't I won't overly ramble. This wasn't about me like gushing and retelling the story of Dragon Ball or recapping or anything, but. Dragon Ball meant so much to me at one point. And by the way, at one point it was my favorite anime. Don't ever get that twisted. I remember vividly the fighting candy episode in the Boo Saga where Vegito gets turned to the candy and he's fucking up Super Boo. I don't remember what I did, but I got in trouble. And my mom said, no Dragon Ball. Go to bed. Bro, I... I've never wanted to run away from home so badly. I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna run away. <laughs> like, I'm, my, I'm gonna run away. I, I dare. Like, how? Then the next day at school, everyone's talking about the episode. I'm left out, bro. They're kiki and having a great time, bro. Did you see when he went through it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm hot on the playground. Like, I didn't see it, bro. I, my mom didn't let me watch the episode of Dragon Ball Z um this week. Never forget that. And my mom knew I liked Dragon Ball so much. There was I had a bedtime, right? Like I this is I come from structure. I come from actually like parents who raised their kids and both of my parents are in the household. So I didn't come from just like here's an iPad and then fuck off, right? I had structure. I was not allowed to play video games until my homework was done. And I could only play video games Friday, Saturday, Sunday for a long time till I became like grown. You know what I'm saying? And, and then she'd be like, I bought this. This is my system. I bought this, you know. And she'll take the cords in the games and print it back in the room. So I had proper trading and stuff. So I had a bedtime. There was a point on YTV, The Zone or whatever. I don't, remember, I don't, think, I don't know. The Zone was earlier in the day. But anyways, the, a YTV where Dragon Ball got moved back an hour from like, I think it was 9 to 10. My mom knew I liked that series so much. She extended my bedtime by an hour just so I could watch Dragon Ball. Series means a lot to me. Um, it meant a lot to me for a long time, but I can't say that it it, it has in contemporary times. I had moved on and moved on to other things, but the imp, the imp, the imprint that it had, the impact that it had on me and a lot of people and and the industry, you can never take that away from him. So one more time, rest in power to Akira Toriyama. I waited I waited to do this because I didn't want to like seem like I, oh I got to get in on this and. When it's popular, I wanted to do it on my own time after it, after the fact, and just kind of give Naya Hemings personal tribute. This isn't for views or anything, just to send off a legend the way I think they should be sent off. So rest in power, Kira Toriyama. Um, I hope that uh, you know Dragon Quest will you know they'll 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 be okay and stuff. And I know he has a, a like a one last work coming out, but we'll leave it at that. Like the video, subscribe. Thank you for listening. If you got this far, what is your favorite memory of Dragon Ball or Toriyama? Tori, I have one memory of Tor- Toriyama real quick. There was an interview that he had where he talked where someone asked him what happened with Goten's tail and Trunks' tail, Kid Trunks, and he's like, honestly, I dead ass forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they didn't have a tail when they were already Super Saiyans and whatnot. So, give me share with me some of some of and whatnot your favorite memories, anecdotal tales related to Dragon Ball, even Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. If you're a Dragon Quest player, let me know, man. Let me know. I want to hear it. And you know, let's celebrate what he did instead of being super sad and mourning that he's gone because he had a legendary life.
Atrion gang, I appreciate you guys every month as per usual. You guys be paying my bills, helping me get through life every single day. Huge shout out to the CBLs. That's a certified BAM lover. They be loving BAM, LaBam, James. But a huger shout out to the Priest of Fire. Those are the tier twos, the certified brothers lovers, and they might be the real CBLs. And the biggest shout out to the fifth Zen God. Shout out to all of my tier three. Shout out to I'm in the gym, Abdel, Childish New Jabez, Fairs, Huey, Johnny Rogers, number one mod, Katan, Lazy Dragon, Lucky Roo, Naz Riley, Revenant, Scobe, Simi, Tao, Tino Brown, Urek Masino, Wolf General, Zodiac Namiko, and Zyler Scotty. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. I got to eat some sugar grass today. Oh, yeah. We moving on up, baby.